Patient X is a 25-year-old woman who was involved in a high-velocity motor vehicle accident going at over 100 kilometers per hour. A witness to the accident called the emergency services who were on site within one hour. Paramedics immobilized the cervical spine with a hard cervical collar and head blocks once she was rolled onto the stretcher. She is en route to the GSH emergency room via ambulance where a C-spine will need to be cleared clinically and possibly radiologically as well. When approaching a patient with a potential C-spine injury, we first use the clinical criteria to assess the patient. The nexus criteria determines which patients require further imaging. If a patient has any of the following, they should get an x-ray of the cervical spine. Neurological deficits, spinal tenderness, altered level of consciousness, intoxication, or distracting injury. We like to think of the mnemonic NSAID to help us remember these criteria. Another set of criteria that is often used to rule out the need for radiography is the Canadian C-spine rule or CCR criteria, which is based on the mechanism of injury. The CCR helps to prevent the unnecessary use of spinal imaging. High risk factors for spinal injury include patients over the age of 65, dangerous mechanism of injury, and paresthesias in the extremities, all of which will require further spinal imaging. Patients with low risk factors are very unlikely to have a C-spine injury. These risk factors are having a simple rear-end motor vehicle collision, ambulation post-injury, delayed onset of neck pain, and the absence of tenderness in the midline of the C-spine. If low-risk patients are able to rotate their neck actively, they have a cleared C-spine. Patients that do not fit the low-risk group must get further imaging. If the C-spine cannot be cleared clinically, we move on to radiology and we use the mnemonic ABCs. A being adequacy and alignment of the C-spine, B the bones, C for cartilage, so the intervertebral discs, S for soft tissue. The three views we will need are an anterior posterior, lateral and open mouth view. The AP view is the least informative view, but still necessary. In terms of adequacy, we would want C1 to T1 visualization. In terms of alignment, we will want the lateral edges, which are the red lines of the C-spine, as well as the spinous processes to be in line. For bone, we would trace the cortical lines to see if we could see any compression or fractures. For cartilage, the intervertebral discs must be the same height and the spinous processes must be in line um, as well as equally spaced out. The lateral view is the most informative view, however still 50% of fractures are missed. Adequacy, we would want visualization of the base of the skull to T1 and if T1 was not visualized, we would either repeat with the patient's shoulders lowered or request a swimmer's view. For alignment, we, we would want alignment of the following lines, um, green being the anterior line, which is the anterior longitudinal ligament, yellow being the posterior line um, made up by the posterior longitudinal ligament, blue, the spinolaminar line formed by anterior spinous process edges, and pink, the posterior spinous line. We would also want convergence of the lines from the spinous processes as seen in the picture. For bone, we would trace the cortical lines to look for any fractures or compression, and the vertebral bodies must be the same height. For cartilage, although the intervertebral discs cannot be seen on the x-ray, we would expect equal spaces between all the vertebral bodies. Prevertebral soft tissue widening can be seen with some fractures from edema or a hematoma, and accompanying symptoms include dysphagia and or dyspnea. However, the absence of these symptoms, as well as the absence of the soft tissue widening, do not exclude the possibility of a C-spine fracture. As you can see here, the anterior or prevertebral soft tissue line is seen in green and should be less than half the width of the vertebral bodies down to C6, and below C6, they should be less than the width of one vertebral body. The open mouth view visualizes C1 and C2 and it's important that you see the lateral masses of C1 and the dens of C2. For alignment, the lateral masses of C1 and C2 should be in the same plane respectively and the distance between the dens and C1 lateral masses should be equal bilaterally. If not, this could be due to rotation of the x-ray 
or something more sinister, lateral masses of C1 should also not extend laterally beyond C2. If there is displacement of C1 lateral masses, this could be indicative of a C1 fracture or Jefferson fracture. For bone, you'll want to look for any fractures in the body of C2 or in the dens or odontoid process, otherwise known as a peg fracture. Hi, are you patient X? That's me. I'm Tegan, I'm one of the student medical doctors. I heard you involved in a motor vehicle accident. Do you remember what happened? I was driving at night and a truck hit the car in front of me and that's what it to be. Okay. And had you been drinking or using substances prior to the accident? No, I was sober. Okay. Do you have pain anywhere? Nothing I can feel right now. Okay. I'm just going to take off your collar just to feel if there's any tenderness. Try not to move. I'm stabilizing your head from above just to prevent any movement. So that means she's failed the nexus criteria. She has C-spine midline tenderness. So I'm gonna to have to clear her radiologically. Another criteria I'd look for is any neurological deficits. That means she would also need radiological clearance. I'm gonna send you for an X-ray. I'm sending her for an AP lateral and open mouth view to make sure she doesn't have any spinal fractures or dislocations. Our take home messages for clearing the C-spine are as follows. Start with the clinical criteria. For Nexus, we think of our mnemonic NSAID, and then consider using the CCR criteria to exclude spinal injury in the low-risk patients. If the patient is not cleared clinically, order an X-ray and check your ABCs. Injuries to look out for are the Jefferson fracture, peg fracture, Hangman fractures, especially in the case of MVA, burst fractures, as well as uni and bilateral facet dislocations. If there's no abnormal findings, you have successfully cleared the C-spine. I hope you have learned something from our video today and you can learn more about these topics in the cervical spine fracture video on our platform.